Awesome. This should be fun. Hey, what's going on, fish heads? Jen Kravasi at Jekyll Baits, and it has been a minute, so we are going to do a cool spray session today. In the mail, I got a bunch of insane custom stencils from Russ Allen. Thank you, Russ, for these. It's pretty much his entire catalog, and we're not obviously going to be able to go through the entire catalog today, but we are going to do a couple of things. I've already got some orders lined up that I have to get sprayed. Today, we're going to be using this little guy right here now it is cut I don't know um, what particular program he uses to cut these but they do come out um, these are this is the craw the craw or wiggle wart and you can see that there are craw markings on here if you want to use those um, you can also do a reverse pattern because he gives you both of these things I mean this is just cool it's the entire package wrapped into one stencil we're not going to I'm not even going to attempt to put these back together but what I am going to do is I'm probably going to designate some um, either ziplocs or folders that I can keep these intact because you don't want to get these bent up and then on the outside of this he's got a couple of different little patterns here so my customer has ordered an imperial craw and generally I use my own hand cut stencils for that but for this I know I can get really close to the pattern that I have on my hand cut stencils with one of these. And that's what we're going to do today. Super excited about that, so let's make something cool together. As part of an existing order, my client has asked for two in my Imperial Crawl pattern. And for that, we're using, or he's requested, two in the Vision replica. Uh, these are the suspenders. They do a pretty decent uh, job. They do float up at a slow pace. You put suspend dots on them and that's going to be fine. So that's one way to, to modify or alter the lure after it's completed and clear coated. What we're doing today with this pattern, I've already uh, put the primer on the top of these. And if you don't put white primer on the top of these, you're going to get that strip because these are pre-foiled baits. Uh, these are the Vision replicas that are pressed uh, overseas, and this was purchased from Scheltz. You can get this exact from the exact same distributor in a couple of different places, so you can either get it here or you can get it overseas. There's a longer wait time overseas, but usually you're going to get the same thing at a less expensive price. So for this one, it's a suspender. It floats a little bit up at a slow pace, but if you put the suspend dots on it or maybe a little bit heavier gear on the bottom of this, once you're completely finished with it, it'll be just fine for you. So that being said, we're working with the um, this pre-foiled and I have pre-primed the top and the bottom of this bait with white, just an opaque white. If you don't do that, what's going to happen is you're going to see the strips where they stopped uh, and, and the glue and, and um, it almost feels like plaster when they put this together uh, to, to make sure that that's smooth. So I always prime the top and the, and the bottom of these. He's asked for the white imperial craw, which is what we're going to be doing, but we're not going to be covering this middle part because we still want that holographic to, to show through. So pretty much the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be pulling both of these baits down at this angle. Now the only thing that's, that I probably won't be able to do with this particular stencil because I really don't want to use a bunch of different stencils for one pattern. I should be able to get all that done with one. But the only thing that I notice that I don't see here is a collar. You know that I put a collar on all of my, on the neck area of these crayfish. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to take one corner of this. Let's see which corner I would use probably the least on this. More than likely it would be somewhere in here. So we're just going to take that, cut it, and cut it. And because the collar needs to be cut at a particular angle, kind of want to give it a little bit of a definition. And then we'll just lay that collar on just like that real low pressure on this. 
And the reason we want such low pressure is that anytime you're doing definition and detail, it's, it's a lot easier and you get less paint splatter if you have a lower pressure. So there's that. And that. So now we have our collars in. The next thing I want to look to do is find a spot on here that's going to be appropriate for making the back of the crawfish. Yeah, I could probably use that. That'll work. And we're just going to be making these segments. Well, this is um, a 110 millimeter bait, so my uh, segment lengths are roughly about three quarters of an inch. I usually do six or seven and it comes out pretty even to that crawl. You want even segments. You can have a little bit of overspray on that. So that's pretty much all we're doing and you can see that I've used this particular. One thing to keep in mind when you're working with stencils to get the maximum use out of them is you want to clean off that excess paint buildup because what's going to happen is it's going to really kind of destroy the pattern over time and that paint will just build and build and it won't sit right on your baits. So just keep a note of that. And then we're going to find the right size here and do just come right down each side. We'll do one at a time. I think this will set up pretty well. Yep. So I'm just using a segment and I'm placing it directly onto that bait. And I'm working from the front backwards. And as we go, I can get a little bit bigger wherever you see the lines and I'm lining it up with the top right here so it can overlap just a wee bit there we go and then just follow that contour line all the way around Now one thing, you want to continue the collar as well. So you want to take the other part of this where you have an interior and just lay a segment down and continue that collar around because you want to stay consistent with whatever side your shadows have been on. So there you have it. You've got one side already. We're going to go ahead and do the other side or the other lure here. We're really only needing to use these two sizes and you can see that his sizes vary as you go around this wheel. This is a pretty nifty wheel. Um, it's comfortable to hold. It's fairly easy to use and I have, I've always been known for doing my own stencils and hand cutting my stencils. because I really don't like to look like anybody else's baits. That's one thing that I've always prided myself on. But you can still have a unique design depending on how you view what you want to do with this bait. And for the purposes of teaching, it's fantastic because you guys can pick this up from Russ at Insane Custom Stencils. And if you watch me and you like the way I'm doing this and you want to pick one of these up, I will link Russ, of course, in the description below. Um, he's also said that he's going to post this on his website, which is always pretty cool. Thank you, Russ. I'm going to hit that one more time here. And then just continue down. There we go. 
work our way around come back to this other little spot here and use this as a collar now one thing I, I am going to do as I work more and more with these I'm probably going to cut them up just a little bit and the parts that I use frequently like this as, a, as an interior collar and this if I use one section of it more than the others I'll probably shorten this up because this is a whole lot to kind of move around and it'll shift your, the weight of this a little bit so I, unless there's something that I don't know I wouldn't feel bad at all about cutting this up and you want to make sure if you do cut these up to use them that you're not doing it on any particular like you don't want to cut it in the middle of the segment you would just want to cut it between the pieces so that way I can save this and and yes you can if you're doing a whole bunch of different size stuff you can certainly leave it and leave that wheel alone but you can also make it work for what your application is going to be that looks pretty decent so far I'm impressed. Well, something else you want to remember after you finish cleaning off the excess paint so that you don't get that build up on there is that when you do the other side flip it over. Uh, it's another, one more reason to get the excess paint off. You don't want any tacky paint stuck to your bait on the underside. So we are going to start small and work big. And on the opposite side, we're just going to start at the tail and work our way forward. And as the segments go towards the, the nose, these segments get a little bit bigger. So we just use the next size. that interior side here and there we have it that's the other side do the same thing with the second one here and you can see it's a little bit easier to, to hold on to if you do cut that up not saying you have to the stencils are fantastic just use them in a way that's consistent with how you work and if it's easier for you to use the entire wheel and keep that in your hand then by all means do that and then just line it all up and pull that forward just a little bit and there you have it. Grab that other s little piece here. And just work your way back. And voila! You have a beautiful crawl that's consistent it's even. I'm going to go ahead and darken the eyes a little bit and then I'm going to add just a little splash of paint in a Maui blue and just a little bit of burnt orange. Just set this back off to the side. Because we're spraying at such a low pressure there's a very little amount of paint that's actually making it to the baits themselves which is a good thing so your heat set time is a little bit less as well now for this one this one's pretty easy because we're just doing bottom segments so I'm just gonna run this straight line 
we're just going to stay fairly consistent. We can actually do more bottom segments than we do top segments. The one thing you want to try and avoid though is over spraying onto the cross segments because it kind of becomes a pain in the butt to try and clean that up. So just be mindful of where you're setting your paint down. And we'll do one right there and do the same thing on the other side. Just try and stay consistent. Just run all that down. I want a little more paint there. I got more paint on my stencil than I did on the bait, which normally isn't a bad thing. You don't want to overkill it. And just wipe that down. And make sure you don't have a whole lot of residual left. So now when you pull these baits in, you can see you've got your bottom segments. And if you have a, a little bit of a gap here, most of the time it's fine, but if you really want to get detailed, you can certainly clean that up. Just continue that around the side of the bait. Just don't overspray it. Don't overspray it to the cross segment. And just run that down. Make sure you don't have any gaps that are noticeable. Do the same thing with the other side. Just double check that real quick. And then we're going to clean out this airbrush and add just a tiny bit because you really want that white to shine through. I prefer to just have it white. Um, I've, I've had good success with trout, bass, walleye. Walleye love this one. one little spot right there and that should do it I'm gonna clean this we'll come right back and we have gotten all of the cross segments and shell sections on here which is cool we're gonna add just a tiny splash of color to it traditionally what I've done with this bait in the past to its face area Just add a little bit of blue. And then again to the tip of the tail. And then on the back side of this, on the belly, we're gonna add just a little bit of this. I'm actually, I apologize. I said burnt orange in the start of the video. I meant burnt sienna. Burnt orange is a little bit darker. And I kinda like this, um, this brownish red hue that I get on that Wicked. And the Wicked detail color is 0074. Just a little bit. And then again, on the tail, just a tiny bit around that third, that belly eyelet. And that's pretty much it. We're going to add some eyes to this after we heat set it. And then we're going to goof around with this stencil set. I'm going to use a little bit of a, a scrap paper and some funky colors. And we're going to show you a couple of neat tricks that I've learned. For this bait, I'm going to be using a 5 millimeter, And I use a red. Let's see here. Where is it? There we go. Found that these fit pretty well. I could probably even squeeze a, uh, a six millimeter on here, but it's not quite the exact size. It's a little bit short on that six mil. So we just yeah, just a tiny, the tiniest little drop. I actually have a little bit too much on 
that one. But that's okay. Just set that eye right in there. And do the same thing on the other side. Try not to get any glue on your fingers because your eyes will stick to your fingers and not to the bait. That is completely dropped in there. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing with the other one. And then we're going to get these onto the clear coat rack. That's just a quick dip. No big deal there. Nothing special about the KBS. You guys have seen me dip that numerous times. But what I'd like to show you is a couple of little tricks with this cross stencil. And pretty much you could do it with any of the stencils that come on a card where he's got all those parts together. And then you kind of peel them apart because you can add a little bit of definition and you can add a little bit of a unique twist to it. I haven't seen a whole lot of people do it, but I know that you can. Um, so I'm going to show you what I mean by that. I'm going to let these guys get happy real quick and then we're going to put them on the clear coat rack and then let's show you a couple of cool tricks. I've got some black magenta loaded in here now. It's a little bit lighter, but it's dark enough to where you guys can see me working. I want to get you guys a little bit closer because I want you to see this. On this, now I've left this intact. I'm not going to do anything with this except for use. I can move this around in my hand pretty easily. I did cut, uh, cut up this other segment here. And you'll notice the way I pulled these apart at the beginning of the video, they fit together like a glove because they were all cut from the same spot. So lift those up, they go right back in. And what you can do, and you can apply this to the bait, we're gonna do it first on my scrap paper because I always like to show you what I'm doing on something that's a little more tangible. With a very low pressure, you can come around and do the outlines right and then this is the cool part you can come back with another color and you can see that there's your outline it's a perfect outline because it's a cool stencil and you can slide in or lay over your bait a different color and it'll look really good. Let me show you how to do it. Now this process that I'm doing is called masking. So if you notice, we'll come in close for you. I've started out with this detail black magenta. With this part of the stencil. You can see that I've made that impression, laid that down, and sprayed around the edges of this. Now because you have the other part to make that complete, you can now mask your bait. I know that sounds weird. Don't think that. But you can mask this. I know somebody's back there chuckling. I, know, I just know. That's blowing a little quick, but that's okay. So that when you pull that up, Check it out. That is the effect you get. I think that's pretty cool. You guys may not, but I think it's super cool. For the purposes of this video, I've already gone ahead and done the initial masking on the bait itself. And now we're just going to lay this onto our bait. This is the second part. Make sure you line up. That's the only tricky part to this is that you have to line it up real well. And then just come back and overspray. Now you have a masked bait pretty cool. You can reverse that. You could do this part first and then come back and do the other side. Um, in fact, that might even be a better idea, but it's just something I wanted to show you guys as an alternative, something a little bit more unique and something that probably not a whole lot of people are doing, but now you can. 
Now something that I, I would also just take a minute to show you guys is that if you have a large lipless and you want to do a pattern like a tick or a centipede, you can absolutely make that with a mirror image with one of these baits. There's so much you can do with pre-cut stencils. So go check out my buddy Russ over at Insane Custom Stencils. Get yours today. Make some really cool designs. And let me see what you do with them.